Here's how to use the SEMrush AI tool to start, build, and grow your small business. Now, in 2025, the entire landscape has changed. If you're starting and growing your business, now you have AI to be able to superpower and use all the AI tools to grow your audience, find new audience and customers, and also find gaps in your online presence and your marketing that you can use to superpower and get more revenue. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that using my partner, SEMrush's AI Toolkit. Now on a web browser like Google, you're just gonna type in SEMrush. And from here, I'm gonna to go to semrush.com. Now, this has been a tried and true SEO tool and service that has been around for a long time. And now they have a fantastic option called AI SEO. And it has a bunch of cool new features that I'm gonna walk you through how they work. And you'll be able to get AI SEO recommendations based on your specific company, your website, your brand, your brand presence, your audiences, all of that stuff. So let's tap on the AI SEO here. And the first thing that you will see is this AI visibility tool, be the brand AI recommends first. So now on here, I'm just going to use a random example, a great garden that is nearby called Plant Delights. So I'm going to use plantdelights.com as my example as I walk you through this. So just enter in your specific website or your brand here. And you can see at the very top visibility overview. This is for the US. You can switch it to the UK and it'll soon have Canada, Australia, etc. And now under all platforms, you can choose specifically, do I want to choose what my AI overview looks like, my AI brands recognition, presence, etc. in ChatGPT, AI overview in Google, and they'll soon have Gemini. Now, as I scroll down, you'll be able to see AI visibility, and I'm at 43 over 100 medium. It says occasionally mentioned in LLMs outputs, but visibility can improve. The nice thing, though, is it walks you through a bunch of actionable things that you can do to improve that brand recognition. So you can see at the very top, total AI visibility, and it breaks it down by ChatGPT, AI overview on Google, etc. Now, as you scroll down, one of the cool things is it says your performing topics. So you can see various topics that you perform very well for, in this case, for Plant Delights. For instance, juniper and plant nurseries garden, other things like hostas. I can open up any of these and see where can I buy authentic Mido no Hana hosta. And you can see that my brand was mentioned. And you can also go down and see certain queries. In this case, with ChatGPT here, you can see the ChatGPT logo, where that is a great opportunity that is missed. My brand is not mentioned in that specific query. So that could be a good option to create a new article or just fill in the existing article to have basically an answer to this specific question. How do I care for that plant? Now you can go through here, you can choose topic opportunities. And again, this will look at some of your competitors and you can see amethyst, redbud, garden and gems. Now you can see where can I buy high quality amethyst, redbud trees. And these are missed opportunities for that specific brand. So essentially they can go through and choose all of these options and go through this and make articles or content associated or dressing these lacks or missings. Now you can also go up and go to cited sources. You can go to source opportunities and own sources. Now we can go through here and you can see competitor research. There's some other really great things and one of my favorite things is to look at the competitors. So essentially what the AI SEO toolkit will do is it will find competitors online that have similar brands and where they excel and you might be lacking or maybe where you're excelling and they're lacking. Now you can see it says plant delights, uh, 
Bluestone Perennials, Spring Hill Nursery, other various ones, and their AI visibility. At the very top, you can always just tap on any of these and switch it to a different competitor if you wanted a different competitor that you have in mind. Now, let's go down here and some of the things that you'll notice on other, basically, websites or other brands. For instance, anniversary gifts and idea and flower types and parts. So let's open up this flower types and parts. Now you can see flower different names. Flower names include classic rose, lily, etc. There are mentions from this other website, but not mentions for my website specifically in Google AI overviews, or this could be ChatGPT or Gemini or whatever. Now, after you've gone through all of these things, you'll get some actionable insights. But one of the coolest things is if you go over to the left, you can tap on brand performance here. And now I've created this report for Plant Delights. If you don't already have one, you can just tap on enter your domain, enter the domain name. You're going to choose the United States or whichever country and language, etc. Now, let's hit view report here. Now, this is really cool because it will give you the brand sentiment, whether it's favorable, unfavorable. It will give you a lot of actionable insights into how you can increase the perception, the marketing, all of that stuff for your brand. So on here, you can see at the plot on the right, Plant Delights Nursery and some of my competitors. Now you can see share a voice. This is essentially how often that specific brand or your brand is featured in AI basically prompts or AI answers. But you can also see sentiment score, how positive everything is online. Are there favorable information or reviews or are people commenting or talking favorably about your brand or not as much? You can see, for instance, the one with the highest share voice, High, Garden, uh, High Country Gardens, has a high share of voice, but a pretty low sentiment score, whereas Plant Delights has a lower share of voice, but a very high sentiment score. Essentially, this means people love that brand. They speak very highly of that specific brand, but it's just not seen or shows up as much in AI, but you can fix that. That is exactly why you would sign up for this SEO toolkit, basically to increase that share of voice. Now, there are some uh, insights on here. It says confidence layer now, add confidence for every gardener. Uh, one name, basically in this case, there are multiple different names and you can converge them all to one consistent name. And then you can do all other things like reframe premium via true cost of success, comparing longevity, replacement, and Southeast survivability, aka kind of I'm in the Southeast, so these plants are survivable in my area. Now you can also go down and see the overall sentiment for your brand. In this case, it's 81% favorable and general is 19%. The key here is that there's nothing that shows up as negative. It's all either positive or general. And then you can see share of voice again, how you compare with competitors. Now, as I scroll down, this is a really cool thing. This is the business drivers. So you can see plant delights here and anywhere that there's that little crown, that is where my business is succeeding. However, there are some instances where other brands are doing a better job. For instance, if I go down to nationwide mail order distribution, I can tap on the little question and it says direct to consumer shipping, expands geographic reach, size, demand, etc. So essentially other companies, other websites are doing a better job. Other things like climate and conditioning filtering, robust zone, heat, humidity, and soil moisture, where you can filter for those so that you get the exact plant that will match your specific climate. So essentially, this is saying, hey, you might want to add more nationwide distribution for your plants, and you might also want to add some kind of filtering so that you can really narrow it down to that specific climate and zone. Really actionable insights for that specific brand. And then also curated collections and kits. 
pre-planned gardens, basically for you know novices or first time users. Basically, this could be a your first rose garden kit where it has a number of different rose garden plants and maybe some other matching plants that would go well in a rose garden, something like that. Whereas other companies do this really well, Plant Delights doesn't really do that. Now let's also go down to perception at the left hand side. And then you can see the general perception. Again, for plant delights, it is quite high, a really high perception here. The favorability is really high compared to a lot of the competitors. And if I scroll down, it'll say some of the reasons why there are basically favorable reviews of this brand. Exceptional, rare, unusual perennial selection and collector plants, et cetera. But really interesting here is areas for improvement. Premium pricing versus competitors. So price is a little high compared to competitors. High shipping costs. Plants sometimes arrive smaller than expected for the given price. These are all things that you can take a look at and determine based on your business. Again, those margins might need to basically, you know, have to be at that certain level to require a price at a certain level. And maybe you can't really work with that, but maybe you can have better price expectations in regards to the size of the plant. So have some kind of scale. So everybody understands, hey, you're paying $20 for this plant and here's a ruler next to it to really get an idea of how big Big that plant will be. Again, really actionable insights on here to be able to determine exactly what you can do to help improve the overall uh, perception of your business. Now, if you scroll down, you can see AI strategic opportunities as well, and it will basically walk you through various things. So in here, it says recommendations, publish transparent release calendars, enable wait lists for first access members, etc. Add a visual what arrives module showing pot size, typical ship date dimensions, dormancy notes, etc. So again, a lot of actionable insight for that specific brand on what they can do to help the basically AI or LLM basically find your content, find your brand, recommend it more, recommend other people to shop on your brand more, all of that stuff. You can also go to narrative drivers here at the bottom left and again go through here and at the very bottom it's a really cool thing at the very bottom I find where you can gardeners find a wide selection of rare and unusual plants. On here you can see where Plant Delights is basically highlighted here Plant Delights Nursery based in North Carolina. However you can find some instances where your competitors are also mentioned or you can find and filter down to where only your competitors are mentioned in specific prompts. These are prompts, essentially, if you open it up, these are prompts for, again, ChatGPT, Google AI overviews, and soon Google Gemini as well. And then finally, you can go over to questions at the left-hand side. And then basically, you can pop up with a variety of different recommendations for pre uh, questions and the question intent. So it says query intent distribution. So in most instances, when you show up or this brand shows up, there is a purchase intent, which is great. People are searching for things because they want to buy something and you're in a great position for your brand to fulfill that and make a sale. But you can also see researches number two. So people are going there just to find out more information. And if you scroll down here, you can find certain things like product differentiators and brand info. Basically, it has your research, comparison, education, various information that you can have to educate your customers in addition to focusing on where they are purchasing and have purchasing intent. For instance, where can I buy exotic perennials suitable for the Southeast US climate? Okay, you can solve that issue and sell them something. Whereas in other instances, there might be things that people are just searching for information but they're not specifically ready to buy something yet. So again, you can go through all of these really good actionable insights. And at the very bottom, again, this is my favorite part. These strategic opportunities basically have another, a number of different options that you can do. And you can alter your website and your brand presence and performance so that it really focuses in on the gaps within your business 
so that you can fill in those gaps and better compete with your other competitors. Now you do have other options like you can do a site audit, prompt tracking, content creation, and they have new things like growth actions that are coming soon. So they're constantly building this out and adding new great features. I really hope this helped. If it did, hit that subscribe button down below and check out SEMrush's new AI toolkit.